Um, I'm a strange bird because I began as a sound editor and then I became a re-recording mixer and then I started editing picture and I still do all three things, although regrettably not as much sound editing now as I used to do. Um, but I really see them, the sound and picture as you know, different aspects of the same thing, the flip sides of the same coin, the a person, the character. And you're not aware of the, all the artifice that it took to get you there. And I, I think this, this quote really uh, begins to talk about uh, some of those things. And in, uh, let's say, in 1889, and editing, the, the idea that you could cut from one shot to another didn't really occur to people until about 14 years later. So, you know, that's, the, that's a, an adolescent uh, person who's 14 years old. So you can think that motion pictures kind of uh, strutted around the world and showing off what they could do for 14 years, and then they got hit by this thunderbolt, kind of like discovering sex, which when editing comes on, everything suddenly is possible. And it didn't seem like it was possible beforehand. Um, not only does, is editing, not only did editing come to be valued for what it did itself, uh, the idea of this collision of images uh, producing uh, something that had value added, that not only could you get away with it, hey, look what we can do, but there was something, there was a third thing that happened out of the collision of those images. It also happened logistically because now you could break the film down into pieces and shoot the pieces out of order in the most economical, in the way that made the most sense. Screen now is me back in 1978, uh, in the middle of editing Apocalypse Now. Uh, there's something metaphorically wonderful about this sort of swirl of uh, celluloid. Uh, this doesn't happen anymore. Uh, partly it's regrettable, partly it's wonderful that it doesn't happen anymore. anymore. It was Tetra, a, a film that Francis Coppola wrote and directed in Buenos Aires in Argentina. What I really enjoyed about the Walter Merch presentation was that he showed us uh, his current workspace and explained his, his procedure for editing a film. And then he then, excuse me, then he showed us a clip from the film. It was really interesting to get to actually see his workspace and kind of get into his mind as to what he goes through when he makes a film and when he does his cuts, all the preparations that he makes, all the uh, materials that he has in place already before he even starts to make a cut. And then he also talked about the, the six things that you should really pay attention to when you're cutting. You cut on emotion, you cut on story, you cut with the 2D space, the 3D space, with eye movement. It was really interesting just to get to hear that from him directly instead of reading it from a book or instead of hearing it from a professor. To hear it firsthand from him was just really interesting and really, really cool. There, there, one aspect of what we do is simply what I'll call the plumbing, which is how do you get this material from here through these pipes to connect up in this way and then up the door of the drain into the English use of the word editing, uh, what we think of when we think of editing, which is here's the book or whatever it is uh, that the author has just handed in, and now we're going to take our blue pencil and say, well, this is good, uh, are very similar to the process that a writer goes through. Um, once the, um, once everything is, once, excuse me, once things have been laid down, now we now and we know we know the B to which we have gotten from A. Now let's see if we can improve that line and make it clearer, more emotional, sharper, not as long. Uh, in a word, your editing machine, whatever it might be, uh, are in a somewhat of a relationship uh, that the uh, that a musician is with that person's instrument, so the violinist and the violin. And how what your bowing technique is like, uh, how you how you choose to interpret that particular series of notes. Uh, you're not changing the notes at this point, but by how you phrase those notes and how you bear down upon this note and how you stretch this thing out, 
are elements of performance, and there are equivalents of those in uh, editing. So fitted them with Zeiss lenses. It, Francis believes, I think, uh, entirely correctly, that um, a lot of the quality of the image uh, is dependent on the quality of the glass that you got out there. Shooting 35 millimeters was about 900,000 feet uh, of material. And we were working on, with Final Cut Pro 6 or 3 uh, using After Effects for uh, visual effects. We had five stations uh, with various uh, levels of, of quality. I had one station. Uh, my main assistant had two stations. In the end, we decided that we used ProRes uh, 720 because of this question of we want it to look as good as possible, but we also don't want to get hit by uh, you know, long time doing rendering. 